So here's a quick video for those on the FunTime software group who are having a hard time vectoring this file in FunTime due to broken lines or cleanup required. So a much faster way to do it is to do it directly and make the cut. Once you're on this website, all you're going to do is right click on the image and click on copy. Then you go over to make the cut and when you're on this page you have an option you can either make the page smaller by using the slider or you can make it larger. I'm currently using green for my background but I actually want to change this to contrast. You don't have to, I just like using contrast because especially when I'm working with layers and coloring the images they show up so much nicer in contrast than they do when you're on your regular mat. Now this little red thing that you see right here is actually called a carrot and wherever that's sitting when you decide you want to vectorize a file, it's going to appear wherever your carrot is. So what I'm going to do is just go right over here and I'm going to double click using my left mouse button and then I get the carrot exactly where I want it to be. Next I need to open up Pixel Trace. So to do that go to the top of the screen and you're going to left click once and instantly you're in Pixel Trace. If you actually saved an image of the file to your computer, you would just find it on your computer and click on it to select it and then click on open open. But since all I did was copy, I just have to click on paste. Instantly the file has already been vectorized for me, but when I'm using Make the Cut, I tend to really like to use a threshold of 186 for most of the files that I vector. So I'm going to go over to Threshold, I'm just going to highlight this, and I'm going to type in 186 on my keyboard. I'll click on Apply Changes, and I'll click on Import. Now that I've got this image, it's already grouped up, I can move it around anytime I want to, and you definitely want to make sure you have the little arrows pointing this way, this way, and this way. If you don't, just click on the image one time and you'll notice that you get now some brand new arrows. These are your rotation arrows and if you click again you're going to see that you've got your arrows turning into little plus signs so you can move it in different directions. Once again you want your arrows pointing this way, this way, and this way so I'm just going to click on it again until I have that. Now I can easily go to one of these corners and just stretch it out and make it a little bit bigger. Next thing I want to do is turn this file into layers and the layers are going to appear over here. So to do that while your file is selected just click on the layer button which is right here. Give it a second or two to layer the file. Now all you need to do is click once off of your image and you want to go right to the edge of the image and then you can just drag this part out of the way. You actually don't need this background layer so I'm just going to delete it. Click on your image one more time and this time again go to the bottom and click on your layers to break it once again. This time you're going to do the same thing but you're actually going to take the layer that you're breaking and you're going to add it as a new layer. So to do that click once off of your image and just go to the very tip of your image, click on it to select it, and then go right over here and click on this button which will add it as its own layer. Now you can see the mat is to the top and the inside pieces are to the bottom. We actually want to change that around. So you can go right over here and you can click on the arrow pointing down and that is now underneath. Next thing, in order so that you can see this section better, I'm just going to hide this area. To do that, I'm just going to click on this eyeball and now I can see this section which is right over here. Click on this section one more time and again click on your layer. Give it a second to layer it. And now that it's done that, click once off of your image and right in the middle of this section where this big black section is, I'm going to click on it once and I'll move it over to the right hand side and I'm going to press the delete key on my keyboard because I do not need that. Over here, I now just go to my inside layer, I'll click on it to select it and just to make this a little bit easier for you to see, I'm going to go over to this little area, click on it once with my left mouse button and I'm just going to color it. You don't need to color it, I'm just doing this so that you can see it better. Now that that's been colored, I can go over to the eyeball that's closed, click on it to open it, and now you can see the inside pieces and the background at the same time. These are the two layers. All you need to do is just draw an imaginary box around both of these images so they're both selected, and then go to the bottom of the screen and click on the Join button. That's it, your file is completed. Now if you want to convert this to a file that you can use in FunTime, 2010, just click on the file to select it and then go over to File at the top of the screen, click on Export to select it to SVG file. All you need to do is name it. I'm going to name this one Lots of Flowers. 
Click on Save. Remember where you saved it to. In my case, I'm saving it to my desktop. And then it's been perfectly saved. Now, if you wanted to get rid of this empty layer, all you need to do is just click on the trash can and any empty layers will disappear. If you want to save this to your Make the Cut Gallery, you can do that as well. All you need to do is click on the image to select it right click, go to export, and then what you're going to do is select to basic shapes. You can name your file, I'm going to call it green flowers, and then just click on the add button and you now have this file saved to your basic shapes. Your basic shapes are at the top of the page. Here are your basic shapes and then you can just go down the list until you find your green flowers. Or another way to do it is to go to find and then all you need to do is type in green and it automatically pops up and there's your file. If you wanted to use it again, you double click on it and there it is. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is open up the FunTime software and all I want to do is go to the top of the page, click on File, Import, SVG. And I call my file Lots of Flowers, so I'm just going to start typing in Lots and automatically this pops up, so I'll click on it to select it and I'll click on Open. Now the file looks as if it's all one big mess. If you go into wireframe, you can see all the pieces are there. So all you need to do is draw an imaginary box around it to select it. Go to the top of the screen, click on Shapes, and then Transparent Group. Now you can place this on your mat, and I'm just going to center this. And if you wanted to, you can now color fill this. So if I want to color fill this, let's say green, I just move over to the color green while my image is selected, and I'm going to left click and there's that file. Now if I zoom into this file you can see that the lines are really nice, they're nice and smooth and if I go into wireframe you can see that as well. So now you've got a cutting file that you've created and make the cut in seconds which would have taken much longer in the Funtime software. If you have any questions feel free to email me. My email address is lovemyzombie at yahoo.ca